All right, guys, let's get Mr. Jake's take on ReZero Season 3, Episode 6 analysis. Subaru unlocks Dragon Powers. And the Dragon Powers, seemingly the region right now, right? We also don't feel pain in our foot. And someone even mentioned, like, bro, we could solve world hunger by chopping off Subaru's leg and feeding it to the masses, assuming that it was edible, unlike, you know, the witch fiends, right? And if so, Subaru being Jesus Christ, there's a lot of parallels. There's a lot of symbolism and different examples to portray that Subaru is dying for our sins and he's a savior and he's the messiah and he's unifying everybody and blah, 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 blah. And there's also like, because religious theme is so huge in ReZero 2 in Christianity, him feeding the masses his flesh, like that's what Jesus does, bro. Like if you go to church, I remember, you have to like drink like grape wine, which is basically just grape juice and a piece of bread every other Sunday or something because it's supposed to be like an important ceremony for celebrate Jesus Christ. And the bread is supposed to represent like a part of Jesus himself, I think. I don't know where I'm going with this. Let's begin the video. Imagine being penetrated by Priscilla. I mean... <laughs> Excuse me? Imagine being penetrated by Priscilla. I mean, ah. Subaru is saying that he doesn't like it, but I'm pretty sure if you were in his position, you wouldn't mind. Priscilla did get the strap on out and pegged us. But I actually like this scene, and the reason why I'm saying that is not to be funny, but ReZero is a complicated show, mm -hmm. okay? And it's really interesting if you just listen to people's reactions to the series, and you can see that some people just simply don't get it, mm. or maybe they're just watching. It's me. I, I just don't get it, bro. Watching it on two times speed, like... <laughs> I'm off with Giga Slender, bro. The motherfucker watched Windbreaker on 2x speed, along with many other seasonals that happened in summer 2024 or spring, I forget. Spring, I think. And he said that Windbreaker of all shows is no story, just Oonga Boonga fights, bro. Like, come on. You can't say that if you actually watched Windbreaker 2x speed ass. Gigguk does from Trash Taste. However, it essentially shows what happens um, with Subaru's new body parts, namely his black leg, considering he's been cursed by the dragon blood. The right leg Priscilla. of the dragon. Now, I'm going to be coming onto the dragon blood shortly because Subaru now has insane regeneration mm -hmm. when it comes to his leg. So I wonder if Subaru is going to use this new power uh, to his advantage. Yeah, I could totally see himself using the leg in ways to like sacrifice a part of him to save everyone else because he doesn't feel the pain there, right? And it regens. There's going to be so many clever ways to utilize this right leg of the dragon. Anyways, uh, the episode today was really good, um, but I do want to point Hello, out, Elsa. and this seems to be a recurring trend with Crunchyroll, the subs are absolute dog. They yeah, we know that. And unfortunately, because we're watching it pretty much on the day of release, there's not going to be better subs to kind of rely on from the fans, right? Sometimes there are people that go on and correct Crunchyroll's mistakes, but god damn, bro. They're, they're absolute trash, okay? And this is pretty much every episode. There's major mistranslations. And and for a show like ReZero, it matters even more. I think that bad subs, you can get away with it with a lot of different anime where it's not like ReZero. There's no crazy depth of story writing. It's just vibing and having fun. But a show like ReZero, even like simple terminologies, vows, oath, contract, covenant, right? All these different things that you could see as a synonym is very intentional wording. Tapi has very intentional like verbiage when using these different terminologies and Crunchyroll sometimes fucks up. You know, I think one of the biggest, you know, downfall, not downfall, but like one of the biggest embarrassments was season three, episode one, when Subaru you know, is lashing out on behalf of everyone else when Heinkel shows up and the sub says like, so I have to keep suffering? But like, bro, like he said other people suffering. And a lot of people will run with that and say, wow, no development, no fucking, you know, uh, no growth. I can't believe you're so selfish. It's like, oh my God. So this is something um, that I might make a video about in the future, but I think from memory, every episode there's been like a, a really bad translation. Mm. Um, Jarek, um, hopefully I'm saying his name right, on Twitter or X. Ain't this the guy that was on my video? On the drama research videos? Mr. Jarek? 
Was there an E there? I thought he was J A R E K. Maybe it's a different guy. I'm not sure. Is pretty much been compiling them, but um, the speculation that these are not being hand translated is like. Crunchyroll could never be Musasia, man. AI translations. Um, to be fair, like, Yen Press, when they translate. What the fuck? What, what the? They just had a moment like this with their titties caressing us? With their tongue out? They get things wrong most of the time. I literally made a video called Do Not Support ReZero, mainly because Yen Press's translations are so bad. So, I don't mind AI translation. Uh, but when it gets this bad, considering this is like um this is not like a light novel, right? This is just a 20 minute episode, so it should be able to be hand translated uh, or, or by a Japanese speaker or English speaker. So what was mistranslated? Unironically, this comes during the crux of the episode. The whole episode is about the night's conditions, right? And we have Subaru having this amazing speech near the end where he talks about mm. the conditions to be a knight, right? And, you know, he looks to Julius for backing. And this is mistranslated in the actual Crunchyroll subs. So you can't demand the same from ordinary folks whose home was suddenly turned into a battlefield. That's right. Talking about, you know, the lives that could be sacrificed. Anastasia said there's going to be no matter what, casualties in war, and we need to sacrifice the minority to save the majority. And the Subaru says, no, those people are not, you know, going to be sacrificed. I will save them all. And the white whale subjugation, the people there had the resolve to die. But this is different. These are innocent citizens. That was the distinction. So on screen, you can see the subs, which this is how it should have been written. It says, you can't demand the same from ordinary folks whose home was suddenly turned into a battlefield. It then goes on. The cultists made their decision, and only those with at least equal resolve should face them. But it was more of like the villagers, the people of Pristilla, did not have the resolve to go out and fight their innocent people. Is that the difference? Of course he's referring to himself and Julius and the rest of them will fight because they have that resolve. Okay. Right? And it shouldn't be expected that these citizens yeah, yeah, yeah. who have lost everything should be required to fight. The crunchy roll sub says, but questioning the resolve of the people who've had their city turned into a battleground is wrong. Again, this sounds... Questioning the resolve makes it sound like... <laughs> Wait a minute. If you could interpret this as in saying what? You're underestimating the resolve of these innocent children and vulnerable women. They're ready to die. <laughs> How dare you challenge the resolve of the people who've had their cities turned into a battleground? <laughs> Let them die. <laughs> you can 100% assume that. It's very similar to the first correct image, but then it goes on to say gibberish. Pe okay. People who've made up their minds need to be met by people with the same degree of resolve. Okay. There's no discussion about the Sin Archbishops and this idea of facing them, having the resolve that, you know, Subaru and Julius and the rest of them have the resolve to face the Sin Archbishops. Sure. All of that nuance is lost. So, uh, a reminder that Crunchyroll is a paid service, but the quality you. You are paying for an inferior service. Isn't that crazy? This is a next level humiliating ritual cuckoldry. It's like those monkeys on Twitter that wants to continuously, you know, get crucified by me. They like bring their cross to me and saying, please nail me to the cross. Like, dude, you're paying money for this service and they're giving you an even worse experience than other free to pay, you know, methods. Just, oh my God. What you get from it is dreadful. It's similar to the Yen Press light novels where there's numerous mistranslations and errors and Again, like, I don't know why people buy the content when you're getting trash in return. So moving on from True. the trash translations, I do want to focus on CGI. If you watched my videos, you sort of know that I don't really like CGI. Yeah, obviously people see CGI and they say CGI bad. I think that CGI isn't inherently bad. It's all about how it meshes with the other environment to see, does it take away from the immersion? Failure frame CGI, fucking terrible every time something CGI happens, right? Basically, if you turn your back against somebody, everyone becomes CGI. Kind of like the Priscilla model here, maybe. But then there is also like, you know, how Studio Ufotable does it. And they do such a seamless job of integrating CGI with the rest of the 2D art. 
in anime. If you've watched Overlord Season 3 or any shows like that, you know how bad CGI can get. So what happened to Overlord? I hear constantly that, like, in the beginning it was hype, and then future seasons, bro, it just gets so fucking mid-adaptation that it deserves way better. Uh, when the time comes to farm it, we'll be there to farm the drama. So when I saw CGI in this episode, I was skeptical. However, I can say ReZero is a masterpiece, and it proved me wrong. The fact that they used a CGI element in the sort of fight sequence with Priscilla was amazing. The way the camera sort of rotated around and Priscilla was mm -hmm. slashing them up like it was a Devil May Cry combo showed me that you can use CGI to a good effect. And it Right, there's creative ways to integrate the CGI. And it took me a while to realize what the fuck was happening. I'm like, huh, camera's moving 90 degrees every time with Priscilla dancing with their sword. Oh, it's happening in instant time. She drew the Yang sword, she's so powerful and fast that in a fraction of a second she did all of that but it was slowed down for us to see with the CGI method. A good effect. And it was actually really amazing. Um, I actually respect Priscilla a lot more. You can see she's quite skilled as a fighter. Mm -hmm. Even Subaru was surprised. Like, her bare hand techniques. Like, she simply jabbed at Al's abs and Al like almost like was like groaning from the pain. Priscilla is like a superhuman strength. Time after time, we see feats like she she knocked out a hind kill with a simple flick of her like fan. I think she's stupid strong. Not only that, if you look at this, she's not double handing. She's not double dual wielding this Yang sword. This Yang sword probably is pretty heavy. Who knows? Maybe it's not. But one would think that you would want to use two hands for a great sword. Nah, she single handedly wields it to a good effect. And it was actually really amazing. Um, I actually respect Priscilla a lot more. You can see she's quite skilled as a fighter. Even Subaru was surprised. I also think one of the things most people might miss is actually Amelia's development in this actual episode. Amelia's development. The whole understanding of what marriage should be. It's all happy and standing up for herself and challenging Regulus when... 180 whatever was almost you know about to die we've seen amelia as the sort of damsel in distress always looking for subaru to kind of help her but this episode again shows that amelia is not this one-dimensional character yeah. that always needs subaru's help she decides that she wants to play some prince of persia and she scales on the outside of the building yeah, and this is very reminiscent of, you know, the little Amelia we saw in the trials where she'd sneak out and, you know, peek, you know, to see what Fortuna and Juice is doing. And yeah, Amelia repeatedly states that she wants to be useful to Subaru. She wants to offer something, even though she's stuck here, she can find some information that she can get to Subaru. And of course, she sees Regulus talking to someone else, and she's able to deduce where Capella is. Mm. So again, I know in the side stories, Amelia is portrayed as an airhead, a dunce, an idiot, and maybe even some more less savory terms. She a retard. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. She's a mountain girl. She's ignorant. She's pure, innocent, and ignorant. Unaware of information that might be more normal to a lot of people. But she is actually intelligent when she needs to be intelligent. And we also see that in the ending credits, Amelia comes into contact with Aldebaran mm -hmm. via the conversation mirror, which again leads back to the shady element of it. Regulus was literally talking on that mirror to Capella mm -hmm. um, because, you know, uh, he called her, you know, like a meat, a good for nothing, meat loving woman or whatever. And then Amelia picks up like a, a minute later and Aldebaran's on the call. So yeah. that means that Aldebaran must be where Capella is. Yeah, and I think that's a fair assumption to make, but I thought that maybe rather than having a one-to-one -one connection, there could be a one-to-many connection where there's multiple different mirror medias and simply Al picking this shit up here is not, could be like, it, it could, could not be Capella's media. It could be something else, but it's more than likely that it is Capella's media. How did he get the mirror from Capella? What's going on? These are things the be thinking about al has defeated sin archbishop capella yep how did he and I'm, I'm assuming that he's the one that flooded the gates 
He's just doing crazy shit. The Pristilla tent too. Kiritaka gone. Every one of them presumably dead. What is Bro doing? How does he have this information? Does he really have a power similar to Return by Death that we're supposed to believe that Subaru is Al and Al Subaru? Capella also said she wasn't the one that opened the floodgates. And I don't see a reason why she was, would lie about that. Uh yeah, and the floodgates again. The incentives at play. Opening the floodgates saved everybody. Not everybody, but it definitely favored us. Julius definitely said that. Killing the Pristilla Ten, they were liabilities because they know where, how to get to T-Phone's remains. Everything right now is being done behind the scenes helps us out. What character right now is gone doing something else when they've said that they'd be doing something specifically? Al's supposed to go find Priscilla and help her. Priscilla is fine. Al is on a side mission doing some shady shit. Um, we know Capella was fighting Subaru and the rest of them when the flood sort of started. So obviously it wasn't her. So the question is, uh, who was it? Who was it that opened the floodgates? Al. In addition to that, on the subject of Al. Very, very uh, subtle there, Jake. Rather than saying it, uh, who did it? Who did it? Anyways, here's Al. Al being a bit suspicious, we get the continuation of his storyline yeah. in the actual break time episode. And what we see is Subaru and Al discuss their origins, essentially asking whether or not they told anyone else. And essentially Al says no, because if I told someone, I would be seen as crazy. And essentially, most people in the ReZero world believe that Subaru and Al are from beyond the Great Waterfall. Isekai. It just explains what the Great Waterfall is, explaining that at the edge of the world, there's a waterfall that washes everyone away, and some people claim to come from beyond there. And again, it's such a shame that this is in the break time episode, and most people won't see it. We see that Priscilla also accepts out of brand's explanation and yeah she said that but she didn't give us a reason i remember making that call out where it's like okay priscilla like usually i would never accept this but uh because it's you it's because it's you al okay he calls him a jester regardless at the ending credit scene you do see a really shady shot of outer brand looking back yep. at subaru amelia and there was very uh, subtle hints in the body language of Al when Amelia's voice was heard. As soon as Amelia's voice were heard and we knew that Amelia was showing up, Al like twitches. Then he has this weird body reaction, body language that kind of tells me that he's trying to remove himself from the presence here. Because, I don't know. Him looking back at Subaru, Amelia, and Biko happy like that probably makes him sad or maybe... He feels that like shit, like I don't have that even though I'm Subaru and he's having that right now. It's his timeline, not mine. There's something along those lines going on. Then you do see a really shady shot of Aldebaran looking back at Subaru, Amelia and Beatrice. Again, it looks like it has a sort of sad emotion here and you can see Subaru sort of glowing with- That seems like something important to be in the main anime though, but not. I don't watch those break times to be honest. Where were you in the last two weeks? The hugest, you know, drama controversy surrounding ReZero right now is the fact that they're introducing all these plot points in the break times, bro. You should be watching the break times. You're doing yourself a disservice by not watching them. Light around him. So what is this trying to involve again? Subaru is the light. He's the sun. And whenever there's light, there's also darkness. Two sides of the same coin. Subaru represents the light. Al is the shadow. Al is dark Subaru. Why not? And Aldebaran is probably the most interesting character in ReZero. Yeah. I think, uh... I used to think that Roswell was the most interesting character, right? And Season 2 did have a lot of developments and uh, revel uh, revelations to explain why he was doing the acts that he was doing that contradicted everything. And now, I think the position of Sus guy is definitely Al. What a weird person, man. Is he Subaru inside? Same height? Same powers? I mean, us not having a right leg and him not having a left arm. A little bit of parallels. Even the entire episode was Subaru hanging out with Priscilla in the beginning. And it ends with Al and Amelia. Similar to arc 3, 
the back alley where we meet Ratchins and them. It was Subaru and Priscilla, and who shows up later? Al and Amelia. Almost as if they're... Pape is trying to tell us something. Like, he's mirroring this shit, and he's like, huh, can you pick up on the point? Here's the link to the video. Please go give Jake a like on the video. Check out his channel if you haven't, and I'll see you next time.